San Diego and Los Angeles school districts will continue online learning this fall due to the coronavirus concerns. Here to share her thoughts on the decision and more is California State Senator Melissa Melendez. Welcome to KUSI, Senator Melendez. Well, thank you and good morning. Look, I, I want to start on a personal note because I was just doing a quick bio search on you and you and my other half share the exact same hometown of Youngstown, Ohio. Were You're you, kidding. Wow. Were, were you a penguin? No, <laughs> no, I was not a penguin. All right. Well, uh, anyhow, thank you for joining us. Let's get your uh, I'll, I'll serve up the softball first. Your initial reaction to the governor's decision to continue the rollback. Well, I, you know, I'd heard rumblings that it was coming, so it wasn't a complete shock, but we didn't know which sectors would be closed down. We kind of suspected, but it was still hugely disappointing. I spent, you know, my entire afternoon well into the evening yesterday fielding phone calls and text messages and emails from businesses who said, you know, I can't believe he's doing this to us again. And we just started to get our footing and now it, the, you know, the rug's been pulled out from under us again. So a lot of these businesses are going to survive a round of um, shutdowns. Well, the reason, as best I understand it, is the rising percentage of the rising positive test results is increasing and spiking. I get that. I, I think everybody sees that, the infection rate going up. But the argument used to be hospitalizations, and there's where I'm having difficulty understanding the governor's decision, because I'm looking at, I believe, at the same graphs he's looking at, and the rise... I. Can you speak to that? Because you know, you're know, you you're a Riverside County area, and I know some of those hospitals were hard hit. How bad is the hospitalization situation here in the state of California and in your district specifically? Well, Riverside County has seen a rise. That is, that is um, certain. We have received some patients from neighboring, uh, well, closely neighboring Imperial County. But, you know, people have to remember that hospital ICU beds are very expensive to operate and maintain and have in a hospital. So they're, it's just not, you know, hospitals don't have 100 of them set aside. It's, it's few. And hospitals also have the capacity to switch their regular beds over to ICU beds, um, as just as in, from an economical standpoint. So the hospitals throughout the state of California aren't at you know, full capacity where they couldn't take more patients. So to your point, you know, I think that was initially what they were saying was it's this surge capacity. But to my knowledge, the state of California is not maxed out as far as patients and certainly has room to grow. So that's a perplexing point then. I, 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 the, the governor's decision seems to be based on something else. And, and it affects a lot of things because I think the school decision has something to do. with It's sort of cleared the path for the LA Unified and San Diego Unified to say they're going to continue distance learning. And it particularly raised interest when you saw the LA Teachers Union saying, hey, well, we also, we can't come back unless we defund the police and sh shut down charter schools. I know no one wants to say this is a political thing, but that looks very political to me. Yeah, that, that was certainly a political statement coming from them, to be sure. Um, and the problem with that is once one school district does it, then others feel the need to follow suit so that everybody is in uniformity. But I can tell you, I mean, we have five kids ourselves, four of whom are still in school, one's in college, the other three, well, one's out of the house and the other three are in high school. And when the school shut down and the distance learning began, it didn't work very well. I think a few teachers regularly corresponded for about the first month, and then it all just sort of disappeared. So I don't know how this is going to work for students if the state decides to go to full distance learning. And I certainly don't know how it's going to work for parents who, if they're lucky enough to still have a job, have to go back to work because you can leave high school kids at home. Certainly they're old enough to be home, but you're not going to leave middle schoolers or elementary school kids home alone. And likely many parents can't afford to hire someone to be with their children all day. So um, there's a lot of concern and frustration on the part of parents out there. Um, and, you know, at this point, we don't know how to answer them because there's been no strict specific guidelines that have been set for the entire state. So it seems, you know, one day they say, well, we're going to leave it up to local control. The next day, it sounds like the state's going to put some mandates out. The next day it changes. So no one really knows. And that uncertainty, you know, in addition to job uncertainty, really has a lot of people at their maximum level of stress. And it's, and it's, it's not necessary. Senator, isn't 
the crux of the problem, one party rule. The, the governor can make these <laughs> yes. decisions without consequence. Yes, that's true. And that's the other part of the problem is the legislature, you know, we were supposed to go back on the 13th. We took a week off because a few people had contracted the virus. So they, they sent us home for a week. And then we find out, no, you're not coming back until the 27th. So essentially, the state the democracy really has been shut down, almost going back to March, which means one person is in control. One person is running the state, and that is the governor. And that is not how our form of um, governing is supposed to take place, that we have a legislature for a reason. Many of the things that he did by executive order should have been debated and voted upon by the legislature, but we were cut out and we have been trying to stop him. In fact, my colleagues and I, Assemblyman Kevin Kiley and a number of others, we introduced ACR 196, which is to end the state of emergency so that the governor's emergency powers were revoked so that he couldn't continue to you know, essentially make law without the input of the legislature. And the Democrat Party has refused to hear that bill in committee. It won't even get a hearing. So we're doing everything we can to try to stop him and include the legislature in some of these decisions. But so far, they have refused. And that is not good for the 40 million Californians who live here. All right. Well, we'll have to leave our conversation there. Thanks for making time for KUSI. When's the last time you've been back to Youngstown? Oh, my gosh. It was probably when my daughter was a baby and she's 17 now. All right. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll say hi to everyone back there for you. Thank you. State Senator Thank Melissa you. Melendez, everybody. We'll be right back with more. Good morning.